What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, as you can see in the title, I'm going to be explaining uh, something that I really value about passive index ETFs, and it's probably gonna be a little bit different than what you're used to hearing. We all know that passive indexes tend to perform better than even the best actively managed funds. And I think this principle is the main reason behind that. And ultimately it's why my portfolio now is comprised entirely of different ETFs. But I wanna begin the video with the main news of the hour, and that's that the stock market is beginning to go up. I mean, don't get too excited, but it seems like we found some kind of base level of support and we are moving higher. In the past five days, we see green, 3.5% to the upside. And considering how brutal this year has been, this is a, a massive change. And this relief rally, or whatever you want to call it, is across all the major indexes, including the Dow Jones, S&P, and even the NASDAQ, all up around 1% at the current moment. And to me, the big reason behind this is the so far positive earnings season. The big fear that's been priced into the stock market over the past couple months is the earnings recession. And so far, companies are actually doing pretty okay. One example here is Goldman Sachs. The investment bank beat expectations for earnings and revenue, and they jumped more than 4%. Okay, so that's the latest update on the broad stock market, and it's the reason why your portfolio is probably doing okay over the past couple of days. But let's transition to the main topic of this video, which is the insane effect efficiency of passive index ETFs. SCHD, of course, is an example of one of these such systematic passive ETFs. They follow a few guidelines and that's it. And the performance of this ETF over the past five years, excluding dividends, which by the way, this is a dividend ETF, is still outstanding. And I'm sure we're all familiar with these statistics that most actively managed ETFs underperform the general market. So here in blue, we have the S&P 500, and in yellow, a very good ETF. This is by iShares, and it's the US Dividend and Buyback ETF. So it's very similar to the general market, but it focuses on those two principles in an attempt to have good outsized returns. And it does have good returns, as we can see here, stacked up against the market, but it still lags behind the basic S&P 500 index. It really seems that no matter how intelligent the manager or the process they follow, so passive indexes are just impossible to beat most of the time. And I've come to the conclusion that the primary reason behind this is because passive indexes focus more on winning companies, almost kind of like uh, momentum investing. So here's a list of the companies within the S&P 500. And on the right over here, we can see the percent change over time. And the basic principle here is that as a company does better, their market cap grows, the weighting of it within this ETF increases. And the inverse is also true. As a company underperforms, the amount invested in that company also decreases. Uh, one example I can point out here is Meta, aka Facebook. Facebook used to be in the top like five or six holdings, but as the stock continues to crash in value, the weight of it within the S&P 500 also decreases, limiting your exposure to it. And this simple principle of increasing exposure to winning companies and decreasing that of losing companies, to me is one of the the most beautiful things about these passive indexes and a major reason why they tend to outperform even the best actively managed funds. And that's ultimately why in my portfolio I now exclusively use ETFs. A fund like SCHD is always going to give you heavy exposure to the current best performing dividend stocks on the market. And yes, I could try and replicate that myself, but it's a lot of work for really no benefit. The expense ratio of SCHD is 0.06% and the performance speaks for itself. My ETF strategy is to identify market segments and strategies that I want exposure to and then identify the ETFs that have the best performance, lowest expenses, and keep it as simple as possible. So I'm thinking moving forward, I'm going to focus on these five ETFs here. And essentially this gives me a mixture of exposure to growth and value. So Vong down here at the bottom is the Russell 1000 growth ETF. That gives me broad market index exposure to a thousand growth companies. JEPQ is a growth and income play. And the remaining names here, Divo, JetB, and SCHD, are primarily income and dividend moves, as well as giving great total returns. So I think these five names cover all the basis in wanting exposure to growth, value, and current income. But let me know in the comments below, what do you think of these five ETFs? Is it too much? Should I cut some out? Or is there one that I'm missing? 
Let me know in the comments. If you guys are still watching and enjoyed, I appreciate a like, subscribe for more content, and I'll see you guys in the next one.